Over on GCN, you can see myself and Cy putting two gravel bikes through their paces on a variety of different terrains. And whilst they're both technically gravel bikes, they're actually quite different. We've got a light and fast gravel racer and a rowdy, burly gravel bike on steroids. Yeah, here on GCN Tech though, we thought we'd go back a step and take you behind the scenes a little bit, showing us building up the bikes from scratch and diving in to some of the details. Like, in fact, these brand new Continental tires that Alex has managed to blag himself. You've only been here two weeks, mate. Disgrace. I'll take that. Shimano have very kindly helped us to make these videos, including sending us, well, a truckload of parts in order to actually get the builds underway. Yeah, and as you will obviously see, we're using Shimano's GRX gravel-specific group set as the basis of our bike builds, and we can then tailor it to exactly how we want the bikes to ride. And I'm even gonna switch in some mountain bike components on mine too. I think that might be a first on GCN Tech, actually, mountain bike components. Yeah, I think you might be right. Now, honestly, both of these builds would be right up my street. But for the purposes of this video, I am going for the light and fast bike. The basis of which is this, which is a carbon salsa Warbird. It's their raciest gravel bike that they do, and it draws on all of their experience. And they have more experience, in fact, than anyone in this game because they were the first to create a gravel-specific bike. Oh yes. Now, as I said, this is gonna be a light and fast bike. Gravel still, yes, but with the parts that I've got in store for it, I think it is gonna be one serious speed machine. Before we get going though, can I just draw your attention? How cool is that head badge? Look at that. Never commented on a head badge before, but I like that. To dial in my speed machine, I've got some seriously slick parts going on there. So to start with, I've got GRX DI2 shifting. So if you want to go fast, wouldn't have anything else, would you? I'm also going to be running a two by crank set. Two very good reasons here. Firstly, it gives me a big spread of gear. So I've got 4811 as my biggest gear. So that's for some pretty fast riding. But I've also got a tiny little gear as well, 3134 but that 11 to 34 cassette gives me some nice close ratios, which is really important for fast riding, whether that be road or gravel. Now you can also see behind me, I've got an aero wheel set going on there. Oh yes, because aero is gonna be important at the speeds we're going at. Also, tubeless. Now this is super important. I won't ride a gravel bike without tubeless setup, basically. It just makes life so much better off-road. So I've got a Continental Terra Speed tire on there, 40 mil, so I could go narrower, but uh, well, I like the volume of a 40 mil tire. Uh, and then finally, with aerodynamics in mind, I've not gone for monster wide bars on my gravel bike, 42 centimeters wide. I can imagine Alex shaking his head at this point with me suggesting that a 42 centimeter wide bar is aero, but certainly more aero than what he's got. And that all sounds thrilling, Si, but I've got some great parts lined up for my build too, starting with mechanical GRX. And I've gone mechanical because, well, we're going extreme, we're going mountain biking, we don't need lightweight, fancy electric gears. And plus, I'm using my left-hand lever to operate this dropper seat post so that we can really rail the aggressive descents. And, well, that's gonna be where I leave Simon behind, obviously. I've also gone for as I said, you can mix in mountain bike components with Shimano's GRX range. And I've got this mountain bike chain set here because, as I mentioned, my frame has got boost spacing to allow for the super wide tires and you need to have the relevant chain set for that too. And on the subject of tires, these are what I'm gonna be using, which are Continental's Ruben. And these are gonna be set up tubeless with a new tread pattern they've got, which has got super fast rolling central knobs and then big aggressive ones so that I can go super fast on the descents. Combining with that, 
Talking of the descents, this bike is all about being aggressive and having great control over the rough terrain. So I've got these super flared handlebars to give me the best control I can over all sorts of terrain and the more extreme stuff that I can tackle on the gravel bike. Well, I suppose we better get building. To a roadie, I'll admit that's not massively close ratio, but off-road, actually that's probably about as close as you want, because otherwise you'd find yourself changing gear all the time. I've fallen into that trap before, because your speed does vary a lot more when riding gravel. So, uh, so you want slightly bigger jumps than you might do if you were gonna ride, I don't know, Paris-Roubaix or something like that.
and I'm going for a rough and tough, rowdy gravel bike. And this is what I've got to work with, the Mason in search of. And what a frame it is, it's amazing. It's got boost spacing to allow for far bigger mountain bike tires, and it's made using Reynolds 853 steel tubing, so I can fly over the rough stuff and rail the descents. As I've already mentioned, this frame uses boost wheel spacing and that's enabling us to use this mountain bike wheel set and brand new Ruben Continental tire, which they've been kind enough to supply for us. And this uses their brand new pure grip compound and shield wall puncture protection technology. And that's a layer of cross woven fibers in the sidewall to allow fantastic flexibility and suppleness of the tire. And that gives brilliant puncture protection against the sort of cuts that you could get on the side of the tire. Progressing through the build of this bike, one thing that stands out to me is just the amazing craftsmanship of this bike and the attention to detail. I've already mentioned it's a construction of Reynolds tubing, but it's actually a blend of Dedichai Zero tubing as well as the Reynolds tubing as well. And part of the attention to detail that I'm loving the most is actually the rear dropouts here and the way that these are machined and formed, it's actually pretty impressive. All that's left now is head out and ride it. So there you have it, the finished articles. And what do you think of these? I tell you what, Alex, I'm absolutely chuffed to the bits with the way these two bikes have come, come out. out. They well, look absolutely they? awesome. And Very what good. a day to take them for their first rides. I mean, I couldn't have wished for a better day, really. Yeah. Um, do take a good look at these, because unfortunately, no matter how much muck off we throw at them, they are never going to look like this ever again, are they? Afraid not, no, not so good. No, anyway, make sure you head over to GCN if you haven't already to see the video where we put these two dream gravel bikes through their paces. <laughs>